All right. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, what I usually start off is I usually do a survey to see how many people have seen my presentations before. That way I know how much detail to go into as far as identifying the signals and patterns. So I guess if you've seen it before, type in Y. If not, uh, uh, N. All right. So far. All right, seems like most everybody. Um, all right, well, what I will do is the, uh, again, I'm, I use candlestick analysis. I came across it by accident oh, over 35 years ago. Since then, I've written three books on how to use candlestick analysis successfully. And fortunately, they're very easy to read. And I became very good at candlestick analysis because before candlesticks came along, I was the worst investor in the world. I was even a stockbroker for eight years with Kidder Peabody, Cowan and Company and Oppenheimer. I got out of the business because I realized the brokerage firms had no more idea about what made stocks go up or down than a man on the moon. So um, through the years, what I've discovered is not only are there good signals and patterns, but there are some very strong signal and patterns alerts that allow you to, to take advantage of price movements at the exact time. So there's a very simple rule about candlestick analysis, which is prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And candlestick signals are merely the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. So the Japanese rice traders use very simple logic. That if you're in the overbought area and you see a candlestick reversal signal setting up, you get ready to take profits. Now, before I start the presentation, there's a couple elements that you want to really be uh, aware of. And that's the key line. The T line is the eight exponential move on average and it has Fibonacci characteristics. And there's a T line rule that says, if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T line. Now, this takes the emotional trading out of your uh, trading, whether you're trading off a one minute, five minute, 10 minute interday chart, or a daily, weekly, monthly for longer term. I'm a swing trader, so I use daily charts. So the moving averages that I have on my charts are the 200-day simple moving average, the 50-day simple moving average. Now, we don't have those on our charts because we're watching to see or make our decisions there. We're able to see what everybody else's decisions are at those levels. Every major money manager around the world uses those moving averages to make their decisions about their portfolio. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. Now there's a very simple concept. If the candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame, or essentially illustrating what's going on in investor sentiment, and the T line acts like a natural support and resistance level, of human nature, when you combine those two, you have an extremely powerful uh, trend indicator. And the reason this is important is, if you were like me, and I, before candlesticks came along, just happened to have a profit in a trade, I was just happier than a pig in doo-doo, but my biggest fear was, boy, what if I let this uh, profits go back to a loss? I sure would look stupid. Well, that is now eliminated when you use the combination where you have to see a candlestick signal and a close below the T line. Works just as effectively on the short side. If you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T line, very simple logic says you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T line. Again, this takes the emotions out of your trading which helped me immensely because being the worst investor in the world, I wanted to find things that would keep me in trades or put me in good trades, 
without all the emotional uh, uh, decision making. Now, when we're looking for power trades, we're looking for things that tell us there's a brand new investor sentiment coming into this uh, trade. This was something we did a while ago, OCGN. That was back when the uh, COVID stuff was going on. As a matter of fact, we found this by accident because on this day, my brother, who is a doubting Thomas, said, well, how do you find the ones that are going to have big price moves? And I said, well, that's what everybody's looking for. And I said, well, here's one that's just broken out. It's traded at 25 cents and it's at 73 cents. Well, without my saying anything, he bought shares of it and we eventually sold it out for 1773 um, a couple months later. That's more to illustrate the fact that when this broke out, this told us there was something new going on in that investor sentiment. I imagine some of you have seen what happened with Top not too long ago, but fortunately, because we have a chat room where everybody's kind of looking for the same signals and pattern breakouts, somebody identified this and they started buying. So the big question is, if you see a breakout, do you buy here, do you buy here, do you buy here? Well, remember, candlestick signals are the graphic depiction, everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. There's a very simple process. You flip to your 10 minute chart. You could be buying here, buying here, maybe not buying here, but buying here and taking profits up here. Now, I forgot to tell you the caveat to the T-line. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average, yes. There's a caveat to that. The further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is gonna come back and test it. So we teach people how to take profits at appropriate times, because how do you know how far this stock's gonna go on that day? You don't, except now you had the clue that look how far away you moved from the T-line. The Japanese rice traders have a very simple philosophy. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom, which was good for me because when I saw the graphics of where I would normally sell, and as soon as I would sell, everything would turn around and go up. Or as soon as I bought something that would head down, I realized I was doing the unsmart money. The smart money were the ones that were buying and selling at the appropriate times. So very simple logic. The further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's gonna come back and test it. So not only do you have identification of when it's time to buy, but the Japanese rice traders provide indications when it's time to sell. If this gaps up in the overbought area that far away from the T-line, very simple logic. You put your stop right there because Logic says if it comes back down through there, it's coming back down to test the uh, T-line. Now, most of you may have seen this, that even though it closed at $23 on that day or $20 on that day, after hours it went to 71, and then the next day it went to 256. So the nice thing though, is that when everybody's looking for the same signals and patterns in our chat room, you have another source of finding the things that are breaking out. Now, what I've discovered is over the uh, last 35 years that out of the 50 or 60 candlestick signals, there's only 12 you really need to learn. And that's what we teach because not only do they work most frequently, but they're the ones that are gonna produce the most powerful trades. So for example, the kicker signal is one of your strongest individual candlestick signals. It basically tells you if you're in a downtrend and it opens here, closes here, if they gap it up the next day at or above the previous day's open and go positive, they've kicked the investor sentiment in the opposite direction. Same scenario if you're in an uptrend and they gap it down below the previous day's open and go the opposite direction, that's a very strong sell signal and or if you're long and you see them gapping it down, you get out of the trade immediately. So why are kicker signals so strong? Because the gap is already built into it. So just to go through a quick uh, uh, review here, there's three different types of kicker signals. A kicker signal, a trend kicker signal, and a flutter kicker signal. 
And one of the uh, basics of uh, candlestick analysis is, as the Japanese rice traders have illustrated for us, if you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area, the probabilities are pretty strong that you're now in an uptrend. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought area, probabilities are pretty strong, the downtrend's starting. Now, the kicker signal is so, so strong, it doesn't matter where it occurs in stochastics. Now, I use stochastics of 1233. So if I see stochastics and you see a kicker signal like FedEx a while back, this tells you there's a dramatic change of investor sentiment. This is your likely outcome. Same scenario on the downside. If you're in an uptrend and they're gapping it down below the previous day's open and going the opposite direction and gapping it down through the T line, you've got a strong downtrend um, until you see start seeing buy signals. So whether you're looking at the signals in a trend or a pattern breakout, you can see kind of a little trend kicker signal. Notice you had a dark day here and then they gap up and notice where they gapped up. This is a fry pan bottom. Japanese rice traders identify this as being a, a trading range where you could, wouldn't want to be long or short until you get to the breakout level. And notice what it did at the breakout level. This is what confirms a fry pan bottom breakout is the fact that they gapped it up big, telling you there's a brand new investor sentiment creating this price move. So there's about six or eight patterns that we teach people as well as the 12 major signals. And there's some very simple rules. The doji rule, it's very simple. Whoops, had this in the wrong place. Here's a trend kicker signal. Notice how it opened here and closed here. And then they gapped it up the next day and went in this direction. And what did that tell us? This level right here was not acting as resistance anymore. And what do we assume from that price move? There's going to be a lot more upside. So the trend or the doji rule is the price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if you see a big bullish candle, here's a bullish engulfing signal, and then a doji. The doji rule is the price is usually going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. If it opens positive, you can be buying aggressively because the doji sandwich is got a big candle, a doji, and that candle right there is usually going to be the same magnitude as this candle, thus the doji sandwiched in between. So the doji rule makes for very effective whether you're day trading or swing trading or long-term investing. For example, gold today, barracks gold, had a bullish candle, a doji, and then open positive today. There's your doji sandwich. Down here, this is called a bullish flutter kicker. Notice what it created. Notice you had a bearish candle. The next day they gapped it up above the previous day's open. And then the doji rule said it's gonna move in the direction of how they open after a doji. When it opens positive and trades positive, we call it a bearish flutter kicker signal because if you took out this little flutter, you're in a kicker signal, your strongest uptrend. So anytime we can see this little bullish flutter kicker signal, again, I call the, this is part of the uh, a chat room benefit that somebody is saying, oh, look at Toll Brothers. They're trading positive. Well, if you went back and looked at the chart and said, well, that's a bullish uh, kicker signal, you can get in uh, very early in these trades. So the pattern breakouts are basically just witnessing signals and patterns and knowing what type of signals are causing a breakout situation. There's kind of your bullish flutter kicker signal again, right at this fry pan bottom breakout. And these are the type of moves you expect coming out of a fry pan bottom. Or the kicker signal. If you're in a downtrend, opens here, closes here, and they gap it up the next day and go the opposite direction, you've got an extremely high probability. There's gonna be a lot more upside after that because that investor sentiment has definitely been kicked in the, uh, in the opposite direction.
All right, so yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions if you've got questions. So this is what happened to Neon after that kicker signal. So I always kind of uh, was uh, stumpedified, I guess, when I first started running the candlestick analysis. It was about the same time that uh, uh, the internet was coming online and there was some financial chat rooms. Um, now a kicker signal has the gap built into it. Opens here, closes here, then gaps up at or above and then goes the opposite direction. So no, that they're different. The gap is the gap. The kicker signal is the signal where they go in opposite directions. But I would always ask people, why isn't everybody using candlestick signals? They make so much sense. What do you mean with kicker signal? It is a candle formation, yes. Whoops, let me go back one. This is the signal. When it opens here and closes here, and then it opens at or above the previous day's open and goes the opposite direction, that tells you there's been a dramatic change of investor sentiment. Our, those are kind of rare signals. Uh, Danny, what is kind of rare signals? All these signals that I'm showing you are, again, in the category of the 12 major signals, which means not only are they very effective, probably the most effective out of the 50 or 60 uh, signals, but they are also frequent. You don't have to really learn the other 50 or 60. I always tell people, learn the 12 major signals. It's not worth your mental time and energy to try to learn the other, uh, all the other signals. You want to be familiar with them, but the 12 major signals are the ones that are going to occur. You I mean you're going to have more trades based upon those 12 major signals than you'll ever be able to, to uh, utilize, which now puts you in a situation where not only do you have a good number, now you can cultivate to see which ones are the best. Kicker fry pan, maybe I trade different markets. No, the signals work effectively in all markets. Candlestick analysis or candlestick signals with a graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling anything that has fear and greed in it. Stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed. Is the care signal based upon the, no, doesn't matter where the T line is on the kicker signal. The kicker signal is effective no matter where it occurs. Yes, this candlestick signals work on all time frames. I used to trade the E minis off the one minute, three minute, 10 minute combination. Right now, I trade commodities like soybeans, cattle, the dollar, gold off the 10 minute chart. So, they work on all time frames. If you're a long term investor, you might use a combination of the daily, weekly, monthly charts. Now oh, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so I would ask people, why isn't everybody using candlesticks? And the answer was, oh, there was too many of them and they didn't always work. And I kept figuring if they didn't always work, we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. And there might've been too many of them, which because I was a greedy son of a gun, I wanted to learn every single candlestick chart I, or signal I could. Um, oh boy, uh, Mike, I've, again, I've written three books. The first book, which was published by Wiley and Sons, have all 60 uh, signals in there. But the second book, High Profit Candlestick Patterns, gives you the meat. It gives you the uh, 12 major signals and all the patterns that work effectively. Um, and they sell for $98 on Amazon, but they sell for $55 or $60 on our website which is www.candlestickforum.com. 
So I need to, ways. I would ask people, why is everybody using it? It makes so much sense. And so I kept thinking, well, if it, they didn't always work, we wouldn't be looking at them today. We just need to learn how to use them correctly. So one thing I discovered was uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I, as I, through the years, I would talk with people and I say, why aren't you using candlesticks? No, they say, we have them on our screen. We just don't know how to use them, which has always kind of baffled me. It's like the uh, young Indian chief that lev left the reservation. And he went to Harvard, graduated top of his class, went to uh, Wall Street, was making millions of bucks when the tribe called him and told him they wanted him to come back and be chief. And his heritage was much stronger than his uh, will to make money. So the first day he was back on the reservation in his TP, all the elders came filing in. And their first question was, how much wood should we collect for the winter? And he had no earthly idea. He said, come back in an hour. I'll have an answer for you. As soon as they all filed out, he flipped open his cell phone, called the local uh, weather station and said, oh, what do your indicators look like for the winter? And they said, oh, it looks about the same as last year. So he called everybody back in and said, go out and collect the same amount of wood we had last year, but collect two weeks worth of wood extra just to be safe. And they all did. So he wanted to be safe. He called the uh, weather station a few days later and said, how does it look? Everything all right? And he goes, well, it's going to be a little bit colder than we thought. He goes, oh, man. So he called everybody back in and said, hey, go out and collect another two weeks worth of wood. And they all did. So again, to be safe, he called back a few days later and said, your indicators still look all right? And he said, no, it's going to be a little bit colder than we expected. He goes, oh, geez. So he called everybody back in and said, go out and collect six weeks worth of wood so we don't have to keep going through this. So they all grumbled and went out, but they collected the wood. So a few days later, he called the weather station again. He says, all right, your indicator's all right still? And he goes, oh, no we're going to have one of the worst winters we've ever had. And he goes, what the heck is wrong with your computer indicators? You can't get anything straight. And he goes, oh, we don't use computer indicators. We watch the Indians. The more wood they collect, the colder the winter there's going to be. So if you don't know what your indicators are telling you, they don't do you any good. So what I discovered is there is very simple com combinations. If you see a fry pan bottom breakout, you can see where the breakout occurred, right where the fry pan bottom started. Now, this is where your T-line kicks in. How long do you hold on to an uptrend after a fry pan bottom breakout? As long as it stays above the T-line. Where do you get ready to sell? When you start moving too far away from the T-line. So again, this takes all the emotional decision-making out of your trading. Same scenario on the downside. When you see a dumpling top, is the opposite of a fry pan bottom. If they start breaking it down, you're gonna have a good strong price move to the downside. You also have signals, again, with the doji. When you see a doji gap up, that's called your best friend for two reasons. One, you have an extremely high probability of the direction of the move. And two, the magnitude of the move is gonna be very strong. So anytime we see a, uh, something that has dojis in it, this is called a double doji setup. And look where it's breaking out, right at a level everybody else is watching. We can see the buildup of investor sentiment. So there's a lot of times where a lot of people say, well, I don't want to be chasing after a stock's already up pretty good. You can if you know what the pattern uh, and the signals are telling you. So again, the first analysis that you want to be doing is which direction is the market? So as we can see in the Dow here over the last few days, this is your evening star signal, one of your 12 major signals, a big bullish candle, a day of indecision, and this day of indecision had a shooting star, and look where it occurred right smack dab at a resistance level everybody else was watching. And then you've got the doji rule. It's gonna move in the direction how they open after a doji or a shooting star. 
Well, if they start opening lower and trading lower, what did it tell us about our breakout area? It wasn't there. Well, you're probably back in a downtrend. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. Um, what are your thoughts on breakouts coming out of consolidation? Uh, that's also very effective. Uh, yeah, so if you see a candlestick signal and a breakout through what would be considered the congestion area, notice how they gapped up doing a doji best friend gap up. That tells you this level is not acting as resistance anymore. So if you know the signals and patterns, you can take a look at what's happening at levels that everybody else is watching. This is what you, we call a blue ice failure. Somebody falls through the ice, the support level. Then look at your morning star signal. What does it tell you? They're bouncing it back up. What happens when they get to the 50? They did an evening star signal. That doji told you there was indecision. And then they started trading lower. I told you they failed here. And the, my late friend, Dave Elliott of Wall Street Teachers called this a blue ice failure. Somebody fell through the ice, they came up to find the hole they fell through, they can't find it, they drown, they go to the bottom of the pond. Well, as he and I were traveling the United States doing demonstrations decades ago, I would help him with his uh, description of the blue ice failure so people would remember it. I would say, how do you catch a polar bear? Well, you cut a big hole in the ice. And then you take a can of peas and you spread it around the edge of the hole. And when the polar bear comes down to take a pea, you kick him in the ice hole. It wasn't a very technical explanation, but people remember the blue ice failure. But you can identify exactly what's going on in investor sentiment at levels everybody else is watching. What are your blue line and red lines? The blue line is the 50 day moving average. The red line is your 200 day moving average, simple moving averages. But let me go back up and see if I've missed any. Fry pan bottoms always form with dojis? No, a fry pan bottom is just a slow rounding uh, bottom. Um, yeah. All right. So here's the simple logic of candlestick analysis. If you can see that they failed in their uptrend and starting to trade off, do we just use the Dow as an indicator? No, the same scenario is done on the S&P 500. It failed right at a resistance level, again, with an evening star signal. And notice this evening star signal, you had a doji followed by a gap down. That not only told you there was a reversal, but it also told you they were trying to get out of the, uh, or selling off the S&P with great enthusiasm, which told us probably they're heading back to the 50-day moving average. So this is what we call observe the obvious. If you can see a resistance level, but everybody else is watching, and we can see what type of signals are occurring there, we know that there's a high probability they're not going up anymore, that now they're caught in a range. And what should we be doing at this point? Doing our scans at night to find the best uh, short trades. Now that's the nice thing about candlestick analysis is the scanning technique makes it so simple to find the best buy signals and the best uh, uh, short uh, trades. My stochastics are 12, three, three slow stochastics. And that was nothing more than a sophisticated evening 35 years ago, sitting in my living room at my desk, thinking, all right, where are the stochastics showing us where the bottom has occurred and where has the top occurred? So simple logic. If you see candlestick buy signals in the over uh, sold area, time, telling you it's time to buy. If you see candlestick sell signals in the overbought area, the probabilities are that you're heading in the other direction. So if this is the logic, when we do our scans at night, which is what we teach people, because I put out two or three stock picks every day, 
Um, if we think the market's going up, you might have three longs and one short. If the market's going down, it might be three shorts and one long. If the market's moving sideways like this, you might have three longs and three shorts based upon how the market opens the next day. But what we wanna do is we train people how to do their own scans. It's that old adage that uh, if you just tell somebody what to do, they don't know why they're doing it. They don't learn anything. It's kind of like the uh, cop is standing on the street corner and he sees this drunk weaving down the street, blows his whistle, pulls the guy over. When he walks up to the car, he looks in the back seat and there's a penguin sitting there. And he goes, what the heck are you doing with a penguin in your back seat? And the drunk said, well, I found him out on the street and I don't know what to do with him. And the cop said, well, take him to the zoo. And the drunk said, oh, okay, I didn't think of that. Well, the next day, the cop's standing on the street corner. Here comes this drunk weaving down the street, blows his whistle, pulls the guy over. When he walks up to the car, the penguin's sitting in the back seat. He goes, I thought I told you to take the penguin to the zoo. And the drunk said, I, I did. He liked it so much. Today, we're going to a baseball game. So if you don't know why you're doing something, it doesn't do you good. We teach people how to use the signals. You don't have to be a sophisticated and uh, technical investor. All you have to do is recognize the signals that the Japanese rice traders have illustrated to us over the last 400 years um, to tell us which way things are moving. So if we can assume stochastics starting to roll over, you got sell signals right at a resistance level, the assumption is, we're probably heading lower. Now, does that mean every uh, uh, chart that we're looking at is gonna be bearish? No, we recommended MRSN because look at your trend kicker signal. Trend kicker signals, when the trend has already started, look how it opened here, closed here. Next day, they gapped it up and went in this direction. So here's the you know, illustrative uh, power of a candlestick signal. Today, MRSN is trading up pretty decently on a day when the market is selling off. The strength of the signal is much more important than what the overall market trend is. We recommend it NNOX because this is your best friend signal. A doji followed by a gap up, showing you there's excessive strength coming in to this. And notice what they did here at the 200. They couldn't close back below the 200. And it's trading up positive today on a bearish day. So anytime we see the bullish signals, the assumption is we're going to be heading positive no matter what the overall market conditions are. Now, the logic says, if we think the market's going down, we want to find the bearish signals that are probably going to go with the flow. So as you can see in Crocs, that's a bearish kicker signal. It had a bullish candle, and then they gapped it down. Now, probably because of earnings. Somebody was asking me the other day, well, if it's earnings, does that mean anything? And the answer is yes. It tells you exactly what investor sentiment uh, is doing based upon what that information was that everybody knew. So they were selling it off hard, and this is your expectation. A bearish kicker signal is going to create a lot more downside. When would you start looking to take profits? Well, your stochastics haven't even gotten into the oversold area. That would imply there's still going to be a lot of selling uh, in this direction. ENPH, same scenario. Look where it started to get a little bit toppy, and you might want to take profits. There's your spinning top. Doji, selling doji, hanging man, shooting star. And you're up here in the overbought area. So the Japanese rice traders have already illustrated to us that indecisive trading in an overbought condition, start taking profits. What would be the worst case scenario? Well, if you were like me, that FOMO, fear of missing out that boy, if I sold this up here, what happened if it turned around and headed back up? Well, the probabilities are starting to show us that in the overbought area, there wasn't any buying. So if you bought down here somewhere, all right, you're taking profits and where would you be buying? Back up through this level, because that would tell you you've got what we call a J-hook pattern in progress. 
wolf, same scenario. Look at your bearish best friend, probably also based on earnings. Now, just the visual aspects of a candlestick chart gives you a good clue of whether the bulls or the bears are in control. Obviously, the bears were in control because every time they brought it up to the T line, they were still selling it off. So there is a very, very simple rule. If you were buying based upon a candlestick buy signal and it closes back below the T line, you close it right back out. I know every single one of you have heard the old saying that you cut your losses short and let your profits run. Every oh, money manager tells everybody to do that. I've been in the business for over 45 years and I've never heard them say how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. Candlestick signals make it very simple. If the assumption is that this is time to be buying, and then they close back below the T-line, you close it right back out again. The bulls aren't winning. Would the same apply to oversold area to break out to the upside? Uh, yes. Yes, so remember, if you see a doji in the oversold area, that's telling you there's probably indecision start looking for a reversal. If you see a series of doji, if one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. Uh, yes, so there's going to be a lot of times uh, one of the patterns is what we call a cradle pattern. And that's where you see a downtrend and then a big candle to the downside. There's about uh, 15 what we call very powerful reversal signals. We call them the top rank signals and patterns. Um, so when I do one of those trainings, it's usually a full day training, but I tell people, instead of trying to learn them all at the same time, learn three or four. Even with three or four, you're gonna have more trades than you'll ever be able to handle. And if you just learn three or four extremely well so that you will now become an expert or very adept at trading, that tells you now you understand what moves price movements and not having to listen to all the rhetoric you hear in the news. Um, uh, uh, the book, the first book I would get is The High Profit Candlestick Patterns. It was the second book I wrote, but it kind of narrows you in or makes it more concise that, uh, of which signals and patterns you wanna be learning instead of trying to learn all of them. So for example, things like the best friend signal is gonna give you a very powerful move with a high degree of probability. Uh, Adrian, yes, the T-line, oops, no, I see you're answering uh, ML, all right. What if the candlesticks are in a flat line? The candlesticks are like small, nearly flat discs, with no shadows and there's minimum volume, that means you don't pay attention to that chart. There's nothing's going on. But if you see a lot of indecisive flat trading, now you're waiting to see which way they're gonna break out that move to the upside or the downside. So I'm just showing you two or three of the signals that create very strong breakouts, whether bullish or bearish. Remember a fry pan bottom has a strong move to the upside? Uh, Victoria's Secret. You can see where you had a bearish kicker signal that started your downtrend. You can see the dumpling top, which is the opposite of the fry pan bottom. You can see how they gapped it down here. So the rhetorical question is, do you short something that's in the oversold area? Remember you're buying or selling the candlestick signals in the overbought or oversold area, you're usually buying a candlestick pattern, like a bullish pattern, fry pan bottom, when you're probably already in the overbought condition or shorting a uh, dumpling top when you're already in the oversold area.
So there's a lot of times where if you see something trading flat, that just tells you that to stay away from it for a while. That's going on right now in Amazon, Apple, Tesla, uh, NVIDIA. They're all trading flat. Um, the black line is the eight exponential moving average, yes. So again, the logic is if you're short, you can stay short until you see a buy signal and a close back up above the T line. The probabilities of investor sentiment moving in the direction of whether it's above the T line or below the T line is extremely strong. Where do you short a dumpling stop? Well, right here with that being a kicker signal, and I'm colorblind, but that's, if that, I think that's a green candle and they gap it down below the T line. Prior to that, you'd say, yeah, that's nothing chart. Now, when it kicks down, you can start seeing the trajectory going in this direction. Or, nah, that would have been the time to be, uh, uh, be shorting it. So everything we see in candlestick analysis is just simple logic put into a graphic depiction. You don't have to be a sophisticated analyst or technician. All you have to do is learn the signals that have worked effectively for 400 years. Um, and I always tell people the Japanese rice traders did not become wealthy using candlestick analysis. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the financial powerhouse in Japan for centuries. And they did it on the most boringest commodity in the world, rice. So all you have to do is learn the signals. Everything else becomes irrelevant. If you've got a trading system that you're already using that works effectively or relatively effectively, if you change your charts to candlestick charts, now you'll be able to see what's actually happening in those, that, that uh, technical uh, method with much more clarity. Um, so what I do, is we give everybody a two week free trial to our, our uh, chat room. Now we've usually got about 150 people in there every day, but the benefit is you've got people that are already very familiar with candlestick uh, charts and patterns. So they're identifying things that are just starting to break out. But more importantly, if you're just now learning candlestick analysis, if somebody says, oh, look at X, Y, Z, it's breaking out. And you look at it, you might say, well, what is that breakout signal? You've got plenty of people that are gonna teach you. So it greatly expedites uh, uh, your learning process. And I always tell people, you don't have to overanalyze candlestick analysis. It, it's, everything becomes obvious once you learn the, the signals. Uh, if, kind of like the uh, lady that brings her parakeet into the vet and lays it down on the table. And she goes, oh, can you help my parakeet? He's been my best friend for years. I, uh, something's wrong with him. Can you, oh, he's, what? and he said, well, ma'am, I think your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no. Oh, he's been my best friend. Isn't there something you can do to make sure? And he goes, all right. So he goes out to the back of his clinic, brings in a big cat, lays a cat next to the uh, uh the parakeet, the cat kind of sniffs it, looks up at the vet and shakes his head. And he goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. And she goes, oh no, are you sure? Isn't there something you can do to check? Uh, he's, he's been my best friend. I don't know what I would do without him. And the vet goes, all right. So he goes to the back of his clinic and brings in a great big Labrador retriever. The Labrador comes bounding in, puts his paws up on the table, sniffs the bird, looks up at the vet, kind of shakes his head and says, Ma'am, I'm sorry, your parakeet's dead. And she goes, oh. So they go out to the front desk and he goes, oh, that'll be $250. And she goes, you're charging me $250 to tell me my parakeet's dead? And he goes, no, ma'am, I would have done that for $18. And then he wanted a CAT scan and a lab report after that. So you don't have to overanalyze. If you know what the signals are telling you and where you are in uh, 
uh, specific stochastics. If, again, if you're seeing a buy signal in the oversold area, it's time to buy. If you see a sell signal in the overbought area, the probabilities is saying it's time to sell. Um, what about the Ixichumo cloud? I've been investing for well over 45 years, which is kind of strange since I'm only 38. But if you learn to use the combination of the T-line and the signals, remember, the reason my charts aren't very cluttered is because the most important factor on a candlestick chart is the candlestick signal. Everything else becomes additional confirmation. So the Ikechumo cloud is eh, just something else you can add on. But I tell people, if somebody says, put something on your chart and it doesn't really do you any good, take it back off. Because again, the most important factor is the signal themselves. So we call this two week free trial, the uh, horseradish uh, trial. And that's because I grew up here in Pittsburgh and there was Heinz Food Company always here, which was kind of a big old stodgy company. But then I learned about Heinz or read about Heinz or saw him on the History Channel one night. And it turns out at the age of 12, he had the insight to that his mother was cooking the horseradish. He, uh, instead of putting in what was known at that time as the green, the, all the bottles were green, he put it in clear bottles. So people could see it. And then when he took it around to the grocers, he let them all have taste tests. So they were greatly enthused about uh, uh, the quality of uh, his product and that's how he got started. So that's why we call this kind of the uh, horseradish uh, uh, trial because the logic in candlestick signals is so great that after a couple of weeks, you'll, uh, like myself, I kept thinking, why didn't I learn this stuff earlier? Because now it tells me to keep my emotions out of my uh, my trading and just do what the chart tells me uh, it's what to do. Where is the easiest place for a new trader to get profitable? Uh, Mike, I always recommend if, and I recommended this to our members, that if you have kids uh, or nieces, nephews, have them learn candlestick analysis first because it's just common sense put into uh, price movement uh, evaluation. You don't have to learn about earnings per share or what their expected earnings are going to, a company's earnings are going to be. Let the market tell you what the market is doing. That's the advice that the Japanese rice traders give us is let the market tell you what the market is doing. So, all right, that's about all I got. I used to be the worst investor in the world. When candlesticks came along, I started uh, at least not losing the money I usually make or losing the money I usually did. And I started making money. And then when we added the T-line to the charts, the uh, profitability and the logic to it even got that much greater. So, all right, that's about all I got, David. Uh, are there any questions out there? What is the difference between you and other candlestick authors? I don't know of that many other candlestick authors um, I guess Steve Nissan had written some books many years ago. And when I read them, I didn't really gain anything. But then I discovered he wasn't a, uh, he didn't trade. I trade every day. So everything that I have discovered is actual use. Uh, so, and then, uh, Danny, I don't like to give my opinion on somebody else's way of teaching until I've 
walk a mile in their shoes for two reasons. One, if I say something that pisses them off, at least I've got a mile head start. And two, I've still got their shoes. What is the best pairs uh, to get going on? On Forex, Mike, I don't trade Forex. It's much easier to analyze whether you wanna just trade the dollar bullish or the British pound bearish without having to combine two of them. So, and I had so many friends when I used to live in Houston, I'd give uh, presentations to the Houston Forex Club and I'd hear so many of them would get up at 2.30 in the morning and try to earn six pips. And uh, um, what time frames do you make your decision on? Usually if I'm swing trading, which is stocks, I'm using the daily chart. And I use the daily chart until I see the price moving too far away from the T-line, then I'll flip to my 10 minute chart. If I'm trading, today we're trading gold, um, using the 10 minute chart. But you can use whatever, uh, whatever time frame fits the, the uh, time frame that you're trading. If you're intraday trading, you might use a five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute combination. Heiken Ashi is kind of a vanillaized uh, trading. If you're trading long-term, yes, you can use Heiken Ashi. I helped a few groups in Texas when I lived down there uh, write formulas for the Heiken Ashi, but I can pretty much guarantee you, if you use the candlestick signals and the T-line combination, you're gonna get much more clarity as far as what's going on in the price move. Can we day trade the one minute? Uh, the one minute gets you pretty whipsaw. Now you might use the one minute. I use the one minute only when I look at a 10 minute chart and it looks like it's setting up. So I'll flip down to my five minute chart and if, if the five minute chart isn't backing off any, when I get ready to pull the trigger, I might flip to the one minute chart to make sure the one minute chart isn't backing off, which would slow down the five and 10 minute chart. But the one minute chart, it was really too fast. You might want to use a three minute, uh, five minute, uh, 10 minute combination. So the smallest chart you feel comfortable. No, I use the 10 minute chart to tell me what is going on in the overall trend. If I see that the 10 minute chart has moved back to where it's in the oversold area and might be setting up a reversal signal because your the stochastics are below 20 and start to curl up. That's my my bellwether chart. Then I'll uh, flip to the five minute chart and see if the five minute chart is confirming. What moving averages do you have set up? Uh, they were the uh, 50 and the 200 simple moving average because Everybody uh, in the world uses those moving averages to make their uh, decisions about their portfolio. Then I've got the uh, eight exponential, the T line. I've also got the 34 EMA on there, which was the gray line, because it works reasonably well, reasonably well enough that it doesn't hurt to have it on there. Some people say, well, what about the 20 day moving average? You can put whatever you want to on the chart. If it works for you, keep it there. If it doesn't do you any good, take it back off. As I say, the more, more clear your chart is, the more relevancy uh, gets applied to the, the uh, signals themselves. Uh, I don't use Fibonacci's, but I use the chart. And if I see something back off, I know everybody else that's probably watching the Fibonacci's. I just put the Fibonacci's on the chart to see what level we might see a buy signal if it backed off to the 38, the 50, or the 62. So I don't use them to make my decisions. I'll throw them on my chart if I see a, it 
things backing off. Uh, Bollinger bands, same thing. Um, you can use Bollinger bands to see whether you're too far out of the, the uh, trend. So anything else? Uh, uh, oh, uh, anything that can add to what the signals and patterns are doing at, at specific levels, go ahead and use them. Um, how do you plan to take profits when you're in the overbought area and you start seeing indecisive or sell signals and a close back below the T-line, that's when you take profits. Or if the price is moving up too strong and you start moving away from the T-line, again, if you, the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is gonna come back and test it. Um, so you get ready to take profits uh, again. With that visual uh, analysis, that you're way too far away or above the T-line, um, which usually means you've got a very good profit. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average. And we, you don't use wave as far as Elliott wave. Uh, he even said that they weren't, uh, they weren't, uh, I don't wanna say exact, they were very subjective. However, we do use waves because we know prices move in waves. The Japanese rice traders illustrated that fact hundreds of years ago. So we've got different patterns that use waves like the J-hook pattern where you can measure wave one and wave three. So all this is just common sense. This is stuff, price movement waves is because human nature works the same way time after time. Fry pan bottoms work because uh, human nature works the same way time after time. So again, there's nothing that you really have to learn in candlestick analysis other than where are the signals occurring. Um, I, I always stress the fact that prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals and the candlestick charts are merely the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. All right, David, that's about all I got. Thank you, everybody, for listening to my presentation.